Okay po, so good morning po for B1. So this is our topic or lesson number three to five. So again, good morning. Sorry for being busy for the previous week. So why we are busy? Because we are in, we are, or we had prepared for the visit of our ARQUAT. So pag sinabi natin ARQUAT for B1, that is the Regional Quality Assessment Team. So sila po, um, um, in short, nag-assess or tumitingin kung ang College of Education po ba is effective for the 21st century learners. Ganun po. So, in short class, para mas maintindihan natin, kapag hindi po naging uh, um, successful yung presentation, what will happen is that matatanggal sa program si College of Education. So, ganun siya kalupit, ganun siya ka, kabigat. No? That is why we had um, prepared uh, various of uh, presentation tawag dito, ang daming proposal, ang daming ginawa from we go back to zero no sa pagpe-prepare. That's why naging hands off kami sa teaching. So, huwag niyo isipin na napapabayaan kayo or kayo lang kasi halos lahat ng hawak namin ni Sir JP, ni Ma'am Chona, ni Ma'am Ale, kaming apat. And sobrang pagod to the point na nag overnight pa kami sa TMCC matapos ng ginagawa naman. But then praise God because we had a successful presentation. Meron man pong mga deficiency, but good thing is binigyan nila kami ng isang buwan para makomply yung mga deficiency na yun. At hindi tayo matatanggal sa program. No? So pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon. Naitindihan natin yun. So isa pang bagay, no? it would be possible na ibalik si tuition fee for the next semester kapag po um, hindi naging successful din yung program na yun. That's why we have to be very thankful din talaga. So sinasabi ko lang to para mas maintindihan natin no, na may mga ganong kaganakan sa school that we have to uh, consider and uh, um, alam mo yun, be grateful and at the same time understand our professor. Kasi po, kung hindi nyo alam, kaming apat, kaming apat lang din ang full-time kami apat lang din talaga yung full-time sa college of education. So, meron tayong mga full-time like Ma'am Lani, Sir Ellie, but they have a commitment to other department. That's why hindi talaga sila makakonsider na um, full-time sa college of education. So, naitindihan natin yun. So, I hope you understand. So, again, thank you for um giving back, giving time and patience for waiting for this lesson. So, let us pray first. Yes, Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify you for our life, Father God. Today is October and we are very much grateful, Father God, knowing na malapit na po kami sa journey, Lord God, sa reality ng teaching, Father. Lord, I bless these people and bless their family. Whatever circumstance they're going through, whatever problem, Lord God, ano man po ang mga uri ng... Um, Ano man po ang mga uri, Father God, ng problem or um, challenges na pinagdadaan nila, Father. Remind them that this too shall pass, Father God. Even this pandemic will pass through, Father God. And don't allow us, Lord God, to leave this moment without our God. A learning, Panginoon, because we know, Father God, that you are teaching us in this process, Lord. And this for me, one, Lord, mahal na mahal ko ang mga batang ito. Ingatan niyo po sila palagi and bless them, Lord God. Start for B1. And so again, this is um our lesson three to four, three to five for teaching and assessment of literature. So let us start. Okay. Wait lang po ha. Ayo gumara ng PPT. Okay, so for B1 pala, sabang in ice cream PowerPoint yun lang mo. I want to remind you na magkakaroon tayo ng meeting. I am not sure exactly of when it would be. But it is all about your practice teaching. No? So are you excited? I know all of you are excited sa process na ito. So, um, ang gawin natin, no, mag-prepare tayo. Most especially sa, yung sarili nyo, i-prepare nyo din. Kasi we are not sure if yan ba ay online? Pupunta ba tayo doon sa school na mag-accommodate sa atin? I'm really not sure. Pero good thing is, I know na matututo tayo doon. Hindi yung mga 
tawag dito, hindi siya, hindi kayo makagraduate of yung experience yun. Okay? Okay po. So, let's start. So, the first thing class that we're going to discuss this morning is the approaches of teaching literature in English. So, what do we mean by approaches? So, do you have any idea? So, if you have any idea of what approach is, ilagay natin dyan sa, sa ating notes. So, when we say approaches class, so, um, uh, tawag dito. So, this speaks to someone. Mm -hmm. This is a way for speaking with someone or something in the way that we deal with it. So, ritinihan natin, hindi, di ba? <laughs> so, when we say approaches, this is an act of speaking to someone or dealing in a way for someone. So, pag sinabi natin um, approaches, it is similar with definition of attitude. No? So, how could we um, teach our student the literature in English in an attitude that they will be uh, learn and they will um, adopt the learning process that we are doing. So, alam nyo ba, literature or teaching English literature is the hardest literature that we could have with our students because number one, the language itself. We know that a um, lot of students have difficulties in learning English, most especially in the new normal process. Why? Because learning English is uh, tawag dito. Kapag po tayo ay, kapag ang student po ay hindi po natuto ng English from their from their, ano dito, from their first stage in learning, elementary, or kaya naman sa bahay, nahihirapan silang i-adapt pa yung um, difficult process ng learning ng English. So, anong ibig ko sabihin, kapag po ang student ay hindi maalam ng simple English, like for example, hirap sila sa subject and verb agreement, hirap sila sa sentence construction, it will be very difficult for them to adapt the link the English process or learn English. Kaya, kapag kayo nagka-anak in the future, kapag kayo may anak na ngayon, ngayon pa lang, panoorin nyo na ng panoorin ng uh, mga English cartoons. Yung mga nagsasalita naman na, huwag naman ano, uh, Mr. Bean, like that, huwag naman gano'n. Like for example, Peppa Pig. Panoorin natin ng mga ganyan. Tapos po, once in a while, kausapin natin ng English, pagbasahin natin ng English alphabets, yun. Kasi po, napaka, na para kapag po sa school na sila, hindi na sila may hirapang matuto ng English language or English word. So, that is true. That is true, guys. Proven and tested yet sa mga bata. So, gawin natin siya. Okay? So, what is the first approach that we're going to use in learning literature in English? So, we have the literature-based reading approach. So, when we say literature-based reading approach, in this approach, the teacher uses a literature-based approach for beginning reading instruction. The teacher rates the books on different reading levels. So, let's be mindful of this word that is being used. Reading for beginning, reading is Action. So, mag-notes tayo, ha? Ayan. So, basically, class, this approach integrates the development of reading skills. Okay? Kung mamabasa natin sa definition, it is mentioned that, the, that there, that it is for beginning reading instruction. So, it focuses with the development of listening, but not just listening, actually, but also speaking. Because when we listen, we also integrate the speaking process because there is a response, tama po? And writing skills, okay? So, with this approach, as a student, for B1, as vocabulary grows, their reading skills develop also and beginning to be more efficient and effective. And us, kayo, as a future educator, ako as an instructor, we need to encourage the student to build upon their reading as they do their vocabulary. So, naintindihan natin yon. Kapag po gusto natin ma-enhance, mapalago, or 
mag-grow si students sa approach ng vocabulary sa pag-encounter ng mga vocabulary. Gamitin po natin ang literature-based approach. Okay? So, and yes, this approach class for B1 takes the students' language and experience to increase their reading and writing abilities. Okay? So, again, we can conduct assessment. No, because that is good for students who are struggling with vocabulary building things. Mamaya, i-discuss natin ano po yung mga activities na pwede natin i-conduct sa literature-based reading approach para po ma-enhance ang kanilang vocabulary skills in English language skills. So, the whole language approach is good for students who struggle with fluency and vocabulary because you chose many books that are, that are what? predictable and have repeating words. So actually, I do not I do not feel like this approach has much to offer to students with reading disabilities. Kasi alam naman natin, hindi naman natin ibibigay ang literature sa mga bata na hindi naman talaga marunong magbasa in the first place. Okay? Because the reading is usually read to yourself. Tama? And students fake their reading kaya it is really important that tayo bilang teacher, we integrate learnings to our students by doing an assessment. Lagi natin tatandaan class, no? I believe tinuro po sa atin sa ASE na it is very important that in every activity, that in every lesson that we integrate to our students, most especially if that is elementary or secondary, we integrate or we do assessment after. So, dyan po matitest si learning. Tama? So, ano ba yung mga assessment na pwede natin i-integrate? So, we can allow them to do activities about vocabulary. You'll give a word na identify nila based sa reading na ginawa nila sa isang text. Ibig sabihin, yung vocabulary na yun na hanapin nila doon sa binasa nila and then sila yung magbibigay ng definition. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na literature-based reading approach kasi we are using that literature to enhance the vocabulary building and the literature or the understanding of literature or the language in that approach. Okay po? So, I hope you understand. Ulitin natin ang approach na ito. This approach integrates the development of reading skills. Okay? Reading skills. Kung babasahin natin ulit, ulit beginning reading instructions. Okay po? So, intindihin natin yun. So, it focuses on the development of listening, speaking, and writing skills. And then, those writing skills, dun po natin, writing and speaking skills, dun po natin ma-adapt si development sa vocabulary. Okay? So, let us continue. Okay, so let us continue. So, we have now the phonic phonics approach, and under that is the basal reading approach. So, when we say phonics class, diba, pinag-aralan natin na yan. So, when we say phonic, when we say phonics class, this is the method of teaching people to read by correlating sounds with letters or group of letters in an alphabet writing system. So, when we say phonics class, always remember that this is the science of sounds. For example, yung mga pinapanood natin sa mga anak natin, sa mga pamangkin, A for apple, B for boy. Okay? So, that is an example of phonic. Ulitin ko, when we say phonic, that is the method of teaching people or students to read by correlating sounds with letters or group of letters in an alphabetic writing system. Okay? So, when we say phonic, again, this is the science of sound. Okay? So, we have now the basal reading approach. So, when we say basal reading approach, this approach teaches word recognition through learning grapheme, phoneme, association. So, this approach is good for building foundations and can be integrated into other methods. So, for us to understand, when we say basal, for B1, basal stems from the word base or basic, okay? So, this is commonly called as reading books or readers, okay? So, when we say basal, basal or basal readers, so basal readers are short, they use short stories, including individual books. For learners, teacher's edition, yung ano class, yung tawag dito, 
yung as in yung book na ginagamit natin sa school. Tama? So, we have assessments and activities for a specific reading level. So, again, it includes a sequential set of reading texts and supplementary materials such as workbook. So, hindi na po workbook. Actually, we could integrate or use flashcards, skill packs, wall charts. Alam na alam natin yan, yung mga wall charts to. So, related activities. We also can use placement and achievement tests and computer software. So, it is usually directed reading. So, this is a good, in basal reading approach class, this is a good, this is good for beginning readers or as a remedial technique for students who are having problem with sight vocabulary. So, just always remember that when we say basal reading approach, this is a method of teaching children to read the employees' books, workbooks, and ano pa ba? activities in a sequence in which each book or activity is designed to build on the skill learned previously. So, in short class, or in other words, yung mga workbooks na ginagamit natin sa school, ginagamit nung, nung, nung mga teacher natin, nung elementary at high school, that is or their approach that they are using for the for the reading assessment of our student is what we call basal reading approach. Okay? Kung mapapansin natin, di ba, yung mga teacher natin, kung nagtuturo ang teacher nyo nung elementary at high school, minsan ginukwento muna nila yung student bago tayo pagbasahin. Meron ganun. Or meron naman po mga teacher na kahayaan nilang uh, um Kahayaan nilang maintindihan mo muna yung story bago sila pumasok na or magkwento nung buong idea. So, ganun po ang tawag doon. So, basal reading approach. Ulitin ko, this method class is teaching children to read and employ the books or the workbooks, okay? In which we are allowing them to read in sequence para po yung books na yun or activity ay makakuha tayo ng idea kung kamusta si students yung strength at saka weakness nila from what they have learned previously, okay? Next, we have the thematic approach. So, a thematic unit approach. <coughs> Sorry, sorry, si Pun, si ma'am. Ayan, approach is an alternative to basal reading program. So, this development reading program is based upon the use of novels of varying reading levels centered around particular theme. Three or more novels of varying reading levels are included to ensure that students can read at or near their instructional level. So, skill activities as well as supplemental activities round out the program. Time for daily reading enables students to read an essential but sometimes overlooked characteristics of reading program. Okay, so the thematic approach class offers a meaningful reading program by providing time for students no, to read um, entire books as well as to pursue related follow-up activities. So students here are exposed to, uh, to pieces of literature and given opportunities to judge their literary quality. So in... Other words, self-expression is encouraged through individual responses sa so comprehension nila doon sa reading na ginawa po nila doon sa textbooks or sa um, reading material na ginagapit nila. Okay? So, why is thematic approach important? So, thematic approach class is very important because it is the way of teaching and learning where many ideas of the curriculum are um, connected and integrated within a theme, thematic approach no, to instruction. Okay? So, thematic approach class to instruction is a powerful tool no, for integrating the curriculum and eliminating isolated reductionist nature of teaching. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? No? Yung thematic approach class ginagamit natin para po tayo ay makapagturo at saka po yung students natin ay matuto in connection with the curriculum. So, dito, di ba, sabi dito, they are connected and integrated within the theme and eliminating isolated and reductionist nature of teaching. Kasi alam nyo, mga students, it's very hard for them to read, or to read, tama, to read 
without knowing the purpose, man, bakit kami kailangan basahin to? Kasi diba, merong mga teacher na kapag wala silang gagawin sa specific na subject, ang ginagawa nila is pinagbabasa ng pinagbabasa si teacher, eh, si teacher, si students ng isang, ng isang piece or ng isang um, literature. Literature piece. Tama po. Okay? So, ang thematic approach, ang ibig sabihin nito, kinoconnect mo si thematic, si thematic, si, si reading, kinoconnect mo yung literature na binabasa nila sa lesson na ini-integrate mo. For example, we are studying po, um, we are studying, for example, uh, tawag nyo ito, um, we are studying hyperbole, di ba? So, we are studying hyperbole so we could use um, techniques or we could use um, literature that is related with the hyperbole. So, ganun siya. So, yun yung thematic approach. We engage our students to learn, to teaching and learning process. Okay. So, let us move on. We have now the holistic approach to reading. So, when we say holistic approach to reading, the curriculum described here is called a holistic curriculum. So, following Miller in 1996. So, holistic education is concerned with connections in human experiences. Okay po? So, kapag holistic approach class, tandaan niyo lagi si holistic education. So, ano po yun? Okay? So, first thing class, let us describe holistic. So, when we say holistic, holistic is an adjective that describes things related to the idea that the whole is more than the sum of its part. So in other words, for B1, that the entirety of something must be considered in, instead of just considering the parts. So the philosophy is called holism, okay? And that where the words holistic come from. So for B1, the curriculum described, the ba? It's called holistic, tawag dito, yung holistic curriculum it emphasizes, ano pong ina-emphasize ng holistic curriculum? Pinag-aralan natin niya. Nyo pala, sa ibang subject, no? So, when we say holistic curriculum, it emphasizes how the parts of the whole relate to, to what? It is how the whole relates to each other to form the whole. So, from this perspective, reading relates to speaking, writing, and listening comprehension and Culture. So when we say it that it is concerned with connections in human experiences, it is a connection between the mind, no, not just the mind, but between the linear thinking and the ways of knowing. Okay, po. So this is between academic disciplines and it is between the individual and the community. So that is holistic approach to. Reading. And then we also have the pedagogical stage of reading. So when we say pedagogical stage of reading, ideally, each text used in such a curriculum should be pedagogically staged. Stage. Pedagogically staged, tandaan natin yan. So that learners approach it by moving from pre-reading through initial reading and into pre-reading. Okay? So... Um, always remember that the sequence, the pedagogical stage of reading, moves the learners from comprehension task to produce or in the production of tasks. So in addition, these tasks should build upon each other in terms of increasing cognitive difficulty. So meron tayong tinatawag na pre-reading. We also have initial reading and pre-reading. So when we say pre-reading, the this is the initial level of learning, okay po? So at least as described in the Bloom's taxonomy, wait po ha. Okay, so at described in the Bloom's taxonomy, it involves recognizing and, and comprehending features of text. So as proposed here, pre-reading tasks involve speaking, reading, and listening. So again, in pre-reading, it involves Speaking, reading, and listening. So in initial reading, when we say initial reading task, it orients the learners to the text and activate 
the cognitive resources that are associated with the learners, with the learners as own experiences. Okay po? So ulitin ko, when we say initial reading, it engages our students to their own expectation. Okay, so for example po, the discussion of genre no, and stereotypes may help our students or the learners to identify the potential reading difficulties no, and to strategize also ways to overcome these challenges. So simple, paano ba natin siya pwedeng gawin? Paano, ano ba yung mga activity na pwede natin i-integrate? Simple activities like oral and written reproduction tasks should be used or be perceived more complex production tasks that call for considering creative thinking about several issues at the same time. Okay? And lastly, when we say rereading, in rereading class, the learner is encouraged to engage in active L2, na tinatawag natin, or the language, the second language, no? Production such as verbal and written analysis and arguments. So these activities, it requires longer and more complex discourse. Always remember that these activities or this process of reading in, involves or it requires longer and more complex discourse. So at this point, class, the language learners' critical thinking needs to interact with their general knowledge. No? So ideally, the, the cultural context in the individual foreign language learners' own identity emerge as central to all acts of production. Ayan. So we have the pedagogical stages of reading. Okay, so when we are pertaining to the stages, what are the three? Pre-reading, initial reading, and into pre-reading. Okay, so let us go back. So what are the approaches of teaching literature? We have literature-based reading approach. We have the poetic approach, which is it underlies the basal reading approach. We also have the thematic approach. And lastly, the holistic approach. Okay po? And the pedagogical stage of reading. Pre-reading, initial reading, and pre-reading. Kung maalala natin yung elementary, pinakandak yan. Nakalinya pa yung upuan dun sa... Tawag dun? Nakalinya pa yung upuan dun sa labas ng classroom natin. Tapos si, si teacher, meron siyang daradalang assessment paper, evaluation paper, ay, rather, na kung saan dun, binedenote, ni teacher or ni instructor po, kamusta si students in reading, initial reading, tsaka po sa pangatlo ay reading. So it is very important po na in-evaluate natin yung strength ng students natin sa pagbabasa. Kung elementary yan ha, hindi naman sa high school ganun eh. Pero meron pa rin sa high school, lalo na sa English, literature, English language. Okay, so let us continue. Now, what are the goals of teaching literature in English? Okay po. So, what are the goals of teaching literature in English? So, first class, maybe, no, we are wondering why we are teaching literature in our school. Pwede na maghindi. Kasi we know that ang students ay hirap sa English. Pwede naman natin ipagpaliban siya because basically, these are not used when when kapag po sila ay nag-factory worker, kapag po sila ay magtatrabaho, hindi naman kailangan sa literature, no? So, bakit kailangan ituro sa literature sa school, no? So, I fear the basic importance of teaching literature bago tayo pumunta sa goals in teaching literature, no? Hindi ko na siya ginawa ng PowerPoint. Let us identify what are the basic importance of teaching literature. Okay po? So, what are the basic importance? Listen to this class. So, these are the basic importance of teaching literature. Inote natin to ha. We have 14. Marami na ba yung 14? Importance of teaching literature. Number one, it expands the vocabulary and communication skills. Okay? Number two, it bolsters their imagination. Kung ayaw natin ng word na bolsters, it enhances, it improves and allow our students to imagine beyond no beyond doon sa abot ng kaya nilang isipin sa reality number 3 it teaches 
them about other cultures. Yes. Number four, they can learn resilience through the struggles of the character characters. No? So, marami tayong pwedeng ma-adapt na attitude or characteristic na characters na nababasa natin. Number five, they learn to respect people that live different lives than them. Number six, it helps them to learn about empathy. It helps them to learn about empathy. Number seven, teaches them the good versus evil. Next one, number eight, they can be warned about the consequences of making bad choices. Number nine, they can be inspired by hero or heroine. Plus, hindi ko na na-explain ha. Very elementary siya. Number 10, they can learn different solutions to problems that they would have thought of warning. And number 11, it could inspire them to choose a career or job field. Number 12, it can help them to picture what they might be like as adults. 13, it helps them learn ways to be in better relationship with others. Number 14, they may develop a lifelong love of reading, which is the most important. Manganak, for B1, when you, um, when you are already teaching, please be mindful or please always engage your students in learning process or learn, reading process in literature. Okay, kung mapapansin natin ang generation natin yan, parang mamamatay ng walang soknad, no? Mamamatay ng walang social media, mamamatay ng walang pinipindot-pindot, binabasa online, no? Which actually hinders them to grow. Yes, that is the reality. It hinders them to grow because, alam mo yon sa social media na na poprolong or lumalaki yung, yung isip natin o yung mindset natin sa judgment, Minsan, hindi naman natin alam yung issue pero nakikisawsaw tayo, no? Number two, it costs us to be, alam mo yun, maging tamad lalo. Kasi in, imbis na binabasa natin, nakarelay tayo doon sa story, nakarelay tayo doon sa movie, no? Na hindi na natin na-engage sa sarili natin sa pagbabasa. And there's no process of learning in there. Wala po, wala. Kasi hindi na-enable yung yung sounds natin, hindi na-enable yung reading skills natin. Tama ba? Tsaka toxic, no? Toxic kapag nag-relay tayo lagi sa social media at sa at sa mga bagay na hindi nag integrate ang learning sa atin. So that are the importance of teaching and learning literature. So that is very important. Lagi yung i-integrate sa students in the future na maganda magbasa ng literature, no? Naalala ko nung elementary kami, we have a teacher, we're in that specific teacher. Ang ginagawa niya po is, nagaano siya, may piniprint siya lagi, may piniprint siya araw-araw. One ano lang, isang band paper lang na short. Tapos nilalagay niya yan sa table namin. Naalala ko pa yung, yung ano namin noon, yung upuan namin nung, high, nung elementary kami, yung ano pa, yung mahaba siya na merong lagay ng mga libro sa ilalim. Tapos, as in, tabi kayo ng classmate mo. Ayun. Ganun yung ano namin. Tapos yung pinipin niya lang noon, minsan meron siyang paper, paper, pang pin ng paper. Tapos yun, ang ginagawa niya doon, kapag maaga kang dumating, yung student niya, yun ang gagawin. Magbabasa na magbabasa. Magbabasa ka. Hindi kami naglilinis doon. Kasi usually, pagdating namin, malinis na. Tapos pagdating namin doon, kung ano yun nandoon sa, kung ano yun nandoon sa table namin, kailangan namin basahin yun. Tapos pag binasa namin siya, ang gagawin namin is, ang gagawin namin po, ang gagawin ng teacher namin, pag tapos na namin basahin, meron kaming general reading, general reading na tinatawag na kung saan, pabasahin nyo ni teacher sa harapan ulit ng isang beses, tapos magtatanong siya ng question doon sa, tungkol doon sa binasa namin. At pag di mo nabasa yun, at di mo nasagot yung question ni ma'am, squat ka, ganun lang siya. Okay? So, nahirapan mo kami doon. Actually, mahirap yun na. Mahirap siya. Lalo pag pamad ka. Pero ang maganda doon is um, natulungan ka pe. Natulungan talaga kami na magbasa at maging discipline sa uh, maging discipline sa classroom management. Ang galing nga eh. Ang galing. Adapt natin yan. Para mga students natin may pasyunga-syunga sa, ano, sa English, no? 
Okay. So, punta na tayo sa goals of teaching literature. Okay. So, for me class, meron akong nakanote pala dito of why is it very important to to teach literature in English, no? From our basic education down to our third um level or tertiary level of 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 education. So, teaching of literature is very important in schools because it helps in promoting learners and essential language learning opportunities and it's really it really helps in expand expanding their language awareness isa sa pinakamahalaga na, na ibigay sa akin ng literature is yung pagtatuto po ng language of english no kung wala po ang literature kung hindi po kami pinagbabasa lagi dati even the parents namin siguro hindi ako matututo ng salita ng english that is really important okay Now, punta tayo sa goals of teaching literature in English. Madali lang po ito. Okay. So, goals of teaching in literature in English. Number one, it develop or and or extension of literary competence. So, it permits a reader to convert linguistic sequences into literary structures and meaning. Okay. So when we say develop and an extension of literary competence, so according po to Jonathan Collier, Jonathan Collier, literary competence is the ability to internalize grammar of literature which permits readers to convert linguistic sequences into literary structures in reading. I repeat, sabi po ni Jonathan Collier, Literary competence is the ability to internalize grammar of literature which permits readers to convert linguistic sequences, sequences into literary structures in English. Okay? So anyone class who are not always associating, associating themselves with literature would be quite confused when presented with literary works. He or she no might be able to read a literary text but not fully comprehend what the text signify or mean so he or she class must possess literary competence not just reading comprehension and skills so we also have developed and or enhances or an enhancement of the imagination and creativity So it inspires them to write their own literary piece. So as we all know, when we talk about literature, it gives a focus, not just reading, but also imagination and creativity. We all know that. No? Literature definitely develops and enhances the imagination of the student. So the different literary genres class allows readers you know, to enter the different world. It could be maybe in realistic, fantastic, futuristic, or or even out of this world experiences. So literature is hopefully will always, no, in the next next generation, inspire them to write their own poems. Bihira na yan ngayon, be part of it, no. Ako si Mumshi na po, no. I uh, I try this moment, mga ganong, gantong panahon, I try to make my own composition of songs as a singer in our church. Ginagawa namin siya ngayon, nagkakompose kami ng sarili namin song para sa Lord. No? So it really helps. Literature is part of that. Okay? That is poems, class, essays, fictions, and dramas. No? And it Also, or the goal of teaching literature is to encourage them to respond creatively, creatively, no, by also adapting it into their skills of drawing, singing, or acting, or maybe in painting. Next, develop of development of students' character and emotional maturity. Discover and realize many universal truths and insights. So through literature. Students can discover 
and realize many universal truths and insights about the world and human nature. So they may learn from different literary texts that the knowledge, the the the, the wisdom, no, and the values that they will apply in the real life because that is really our goal in teaching, not just literature would be more creative and imaginative, but um, it could also be used in every area or concepts of real life. Number four, develop critical thinking. Interpret, analyze, and criticize things. So literature is a very good means to develop critical thinking for B1. So students may be challenged to interrogate their own belief no, in practices and those of others. So the study of literature class will help them interpret, analyze, and criticize things in their own life and those around them. And lastly, we have number five, development of literary competence and a refined duty provide love for literature. So the literary experiences should provide the goals or should provide the students to love the literature. No? They will learn what is the beautiful in poem, what to like on the drama, that um, what is good in a novel or short stories, or hopefully they will read their own, no? their own and become readers of literature for life. So in reading those pieces, it can widen their perspective, their emotional maturity, and their critical thinking. So yan po yung importance or importance, yung goal natin in teaching literature. No? So there are very important. So lagi naman natin tatandaan na lahat naman na tinuturo natin sa students sa atin ay may goal. No? May importance may importance bakit natin sila tinuturo in the first place at my outcome. No? So, lagi natin i-goal that when we are reading literature, that they should, should love the literature itself. Because kung hindi nila mamahalin yung process ng learning ng process of, ng learning literature, surely, hindi na nila uulitin yun. Hindi na nila gagawin. And probably, they will not love or they will not have the idea of being educator in the future kasi nandun sa literature. So, although literature is complex, no? actually complex siya, kasi hindi lang siya reading, andun yung understanding, no? andun yung experiment, kasi kung gusto mo maintindihan yung pinagdandaanan, for example, ni, ni character, you will experiment or conduct um, evaluation with yourself how that might happen in real life. Tama? Okay. So that are the goals in teaching literature. So kung mapapansin natin, lahat sa development, development and development. Literature helps develop every area or perspective in one's life. Okay po? So class, I have here a proposed activity that you are going to do. This is very easy. In a short pan paper, in a short pan paper class, you are going to, to interview one of your teachers in elementary or high school through chat. Punta nyo sa bahay, wag naman. Chat na lang, no? Kahit sino class, basta teacher nyo nung elementary at high school. So, anong elementary or high school? Isa lang, isa lang po. So, ano pong gagawin natin? We are going to interview them and ask these five questions. Again, we are going to conduct an interview to them at tatanungin natin ito limang question. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin sa short man paper is um, ilalagay lang natin yung pangalan ng in-interview natin tapos list down these questions tapos yung response nila. So, number one, question, what are her or his strength in teaching literature in English? I repeat. Number one question, what are her or his strength in teaching literature in English? Okay po. Number two, what are her or his weakness in teaching literature in English? Kung meron tayong strength, number two, weaknesses. Number three, what are the challenges in teaching literature in English? 
what are the challenges in teaching literature in English? Number four, what are the challenges in teaching literature during the new normal? What are the challenges in teaching literature in the new normal? And number five, lastly, why is it important to teach literature in English? Why is it important to teach literature in English? Number one and two, strength and weakness. Number three, challenges po. In number three, four, teaching challenges in teaching literature. So number four po, yun po is a new normal. And then number five, bakit importante ang pagtuturo ng literature in English? So that are the questions that we are going to ask during our interview. Okay? So I hope you understand, no? For B1, the activity that you're going to do. Actually, this is your activity and it will be recorded as a preliminary requirement. Okay? So I hope you learned today. So God bless everyone. So always pray, no? And if you have any questions or clarifications about our discussion, just be mindful of sending me a personal message. Okay? So, God bless po sa bawat isa. And, ano tayo? Um, maging mag-rejoice, no? Sa process natin ngayon, kahit mahirap. Tsaka, lagi magpipray, lagi magpipray. So, thank you so much for B1. The deadline of your activities will be on the next Friday. Okay? So, that will be on October 15. Okay, so I hope magawa natin asap. And kapag po tayo magsasend ng question or mag, makikipag-usap sa teacher natin, use the English language for formality. Okay pa? So thank you so much everyone. God bless and bye-bye.